Welcome to the Commerce Mentorship Program's online lecture series. My name is Richard and I'm the online tutor for Commerce 294, Managerial Accounting. Today we'll be focusing on reporting for control. I'll begin by providing you with a brief overview of the subject matter, pointing out key formulas and tips that you will need to succeed in this topic. I will then guide you through some questions relevant to the course material. This is a good time to test your knowledge and understanding of the subject matter. Pause the video before I present the solution and attempt to complete the question on your own. You will know you have mastered the concepts presented when you are able to complete the questions independently. However, it is good to remember that you should not measure success on this video alone. Accounting requires practice, and the more exercises you are able to complete from your textbook and from your instructor, the higher your likelihood of success in this course. At the end of this video, I will review our goals and objectives for today. Your job is to ensure that you have met each of these objectives and that you fully understand them. If you have any questions at any time during the video, please make a note of it and speak to your instructor or teaching assistant. Not everyone will initially understand the concepts presented today, and you may find that you require some assistance. Do note that this is perfectly natural. By the end of this video, you should be able to prepare a segmented income statement, calculate and analyze a return on assets, or an ROA, and calculate residual income. Let's begin by discussing the topic of segmented income statements. Segmented income statements are a different type of income statement. They can be used to evaluate the performance of individual segments or divisions rather than the company as a whole. This allows company decision makers to evaluate the profitability or performance of each individual segment and make decisions about whether to keep or drop it. Through a segmented income statement, we can also further split costs into controllable and non-controllable portions to evaluate the performance of individual segment margins. Preparing a segmented income statement is actually quite simple. Begin by listing all segments or divisions in columns. For example, if my company had a Vancouver division and a Surrey division, I would have one column devoted to Vancouver and one column devoted to Surrey. Don't forget to also include a total column. This will be the aggregate of all divisions in the income statement, in this case, Vancouver and Surrey. Next, compute the following items for each column heading or division. These go down the left side as row headings. Begin with sales, then take away variable expenses to find the segment contribution margin. Then take away direct fixed costs from the segment contribution margin to find the segment margin. A reminder that direct fixed costs are any costs directly traceable to a specific segment or division. For example, a Vancouver sales manager would be directly traceable to the Vancouver division, whereas a widget production manager would be directly traceable to the widget production line. Following that, you want to aggregate all rows and find row totals for each individual row. For example, if direct fixed costs total $20,000 for Vancouver and $20,000 for Surrey, I'll want to list $40,000 of direct fixed costs in the total column. By now, you should have worked your way down to the segment margin row. From there, compute the following items only in the total column. Do not compute these items for each individual segment as it relates to all segments and divisions. Segment margin minus common fixed costs equals net income before tax. Net income before tax minus income tax equals net income after tax. If you choose to do so, you may further split your costs into controllable and uncontrollable costs. For example, instead of simply taking your segment contribution margin and subtracting direct fixed costs to find your segment margin, you can take your segment contribution margin remove controllable direct fixed costs to find your segment margin controlled by the division, then take away your uncontrollable direct fixed costs to find your segment margin. Controllable costs are those that the division or segment has control over, whereas uncontrollable costs are those the division or segment has no control over, or costs that may have been imposed by the company's head office. Let's work on an example. ABC Company has two branches, the North and the South branch. Each store is headed by a store director who is responsible for a number of functions. Advertising, legal services, payroll are all handled by a central office located in the east. 
Head office costs are allocated to the North and South branch on the basis of sales revenue. Both North and South sell the XYZ 200 at $50 per unit. The results of ABC Company for the past fiscal year were as follows. Additional information. Number one, each branch has its own set of cleaning staff. The North branch employs two cleaners who are paid on a yearly salary of $50,000. The South branch employs two unionized cleaners who are paid a yearly salary of $80,000. Head office also employs two cleaners whose wages are allocated between the North and South store based on sales revenue. Number two, both the North and South branch were asked to upgrade their POS system this past year by the CEO of ABC. Costs of the new POS system were divided between the North and South store based on the time it took the technician to complete the setup of the new system. As the North store is larger, there are more terminals that need to be set up, which accounts for this difference in cost. Supplies refer to pencils ordered for ABC each year. The amount is fixed and each location is home to four designers who require 500 pencils per year. If the designers do not receive their 500 pencils, they will refuse to work. Number four, utility costs include both a variable and fixed portion. Both the North and South branch pay a fixed rate of $40,000 per year, regardless of their water, heat, or electricity consumption. The remaining balance in utilities is variable and depends on the amount of water, heat, and electricity used in the production process. The required here is to prepare a segmented income statement for ABC Company, where segments are defined as branches. We begin by listing all segments and divisions in columns as well as a total column. There are two divisions in this question, a north branch and a south branch. We then begin by finding sales revenues, variable costs, and segment contribution margins for the north and south branch. The two variable costs we have in our question are cost of goods sold and the variable portion of utility costs. We then want to take our segment contribution margin and subtract our direct fixed costs to find our segment margin. Remember that we have both controllable and uncontrollable fixed costs in this scenario. Controllable costs include the cleaning staff, as the branches can fire, hire, reduce, add cleaning staff, but exclude head office cleaners as they do not have control over who cleans the head office, how long they work for, or how many head office cleaners there are. Non-controllable or uncontrollable fixed costs include the new POS system, which was mandated by the head office, the supplies which must be provided or the workers will quit, and the $40,000 utility fixed cost, which must be paid regardless of the usage. With all this in mind, we can calculate a $600,000 segment margin controlled by the North Branch and a $182,000 segment margin controlled by the South Branch as well as a $358,969 segment margin for the North Branch and a $94,969 segment margin for the South Branch. We now want to aggregate all the rows to complete our total column. This is a very mechanical and tedious step. Our final step is to take our segment margin and subtract common fixed costs to find our net income in the total column only. Common fixed costs in this scenario include advertising, legal services, head office cleaning staff, and payroll administrators. This gives us a net income of $53,939. Let's move on to return on assets. Return on assets, or ROA, is an indicator of how profitable a company is relative to its assets. It is calculated by the formula net operating income divided by average assets, where net operating income consists of earnings before interest and taxes, and average assets consists of this year's assets and last year's assets divided by two. ROA results can vary substantially and are highly dependent on the industry, as some may require high capital investments on a consistent basis. These values are therefore most useful when compared against previous company ROAs, or those of a similar company. 
Residual income, on the other hand, is income generated by a firm after accounting for the true cost of its capital. It can be calculated through the formula net operating income minus bracket average operating assets multiplied by the cost of capital, where average assets consist of this year's assets and last year's assets divided by two, and the cost of capital is the required return necessary to make a capital project worthwhile. Let's do an example. The CEO of Leo's Restaurant provided you with the following information for the past three years. The minimum required rate of return is 2% for 2010, 3.5% for 2011, and 5% for 2012. The required here is to compute Leo's ROA income and residual income for 2012. Using the ROA formula of net operating income over average assets, we are able to find an ROA of 17.74%. Using the residual income formula, we were able to find a residual income value of $1,549,145. This concludes our online tutorial on reporting for control. Let's review our objectives for today. By now, you should be able to prepare a segmented income statement, calculate and analyze a return on assets or ROA, and calculate residual income. Remember that reviewing your past assignments is crucial in COM 294. Don't just settle for the 60% you got on your previous assignment. Go back and redo the questions and practice the ones you got wrong so that you will not make similar mistakes on the midterm or final. For additional problems, please visit us online at cmp.cus.ca. If you have any additional questions, please consult your professor or teaching assistants. Thank you.